with a plain puff or national anthem.
Live from the Max Sports Complex on the campus of Hofstra University, it's Hofstra Pride Men's Basketball. And tonight, it's the CAA opener for the Pride as they welcome in the Charleston Cougars. Well, hello again, everybody. Alongside Dan Savarino, I'm Kevin Dexter. Thanks so much for making us a part of your Thursday evening. Well, Dan, it doesn't get much better than this. The opener of CAA play and the two best teams from a season ago in the conference, Hofstra and Charleston, to kick things off tonight. Yeah, when that CAA schedule came out a while ago, you saw and you said, listen, to open up Hofstra Charleston, I mean, that is just a, a big time matchup to really open up the CAA slate. But different teams from a season ago, they did lose some key pieces on both ends, but if you're telling me that Charleston isn't thinking about last year, their 20 game win streak stopping when Hofstra went down there to TD Arena, I'm telling you, you're absolutely lying. It's definitely on the minds. Well, it was just one meeting a season ago. Dan, you mentioned it. Hofstra snapping Charleston's record 20 game winning streak. Big win on the road. Jaquan Carlos made some tough shots down the stretch of that game, and he continued used to be key for the pride here, the junior point guard. Yeah, 12 points in the second half of that game. Big shot after big shot. But this season, he's kind of doing the same thing. You know, it's scoring number has been going up, but that assist number has really not declined at all, which you love to see. One of the best in the nation in assists per game right now. He's distributing the basketball really, really well and is providing that third scoring option. And if Charleston's going to win this basketball game, he's going to be one of the big reasons why. Ante Bersovich, six foot ten, he can get down low, he can defend up high against smaller players. He is athletic. He becomes a real mismatch for so many players that they see against. The numbers don't jump off the page, you Kevin, but he still has been such a key member of this squad and is going to be tonight if they're going to come away with a victory. And here are the starting lineups brought to you by the Land Tech Group. Charleston 9-4 and four overall, winners of eight of their last nine. A very balanced lineup. A couple guys in the starting five. Three guys averaging over 10 points per game. For the Pride, they are 7-6 and six overall, coming off a loss at UBS Arena to St. John's on Saturday. Same starting five they've had for every game, but that game against St. John's, Yako Fritz returning tonight after missing that one due to injury. And, Dan, the keys to the game are brought to you by Bical Chevrolet in Valley Stream. Yeah, if you're Hofstra, you got to give him Fritz in more ways than one. Yako Fritz is going to be a real key in this game tonight for Hofstra. Obviously, both teams shoot the three balls so well, but he's going to have to be defending really well inside the paint. And on the glass for Charleston, they're so good at getting offensive rebounds. 33rd best in the entire nation at getting offensive rebounds. So that's where it's going to come down to. Well, Speedy Claxton, the CAA Coach of the Year last season, 16-2 in conference play, leading the pride to that big time road win down in Charleston over Pat Kelsey's squad in his third year at Charleston last year. 31 wins, the CAA tournament champions and a tight loss in the NCAA tournament for the Charleston Cougars. Pride win the opening tip, they are in the home whites. Charleston in the road blacks. We are underway in CAA play from Hempstead, New York. Thanks so much for making us a part of your Thursday. Tyler Thomas thought about a deep three, now will take it. Leaves it short, and this one stepped out of bounds there, did C.J. Fulton. So the Pride will keep possession. Uh, these are two teams that love to shoot the three, Dan. One of the things we are looking out for here tonight, and Tyler Thomas, an early fire on a deep one. Yeah, Hofstra ninth in the entire country in three-point field goals made per game. Charleston 28th in the nation and third in attempts, Hofstra 15th in attempts. I mean, they love to shoot the three ball and that's why it's so important for them to work inside. As Jaco Fritz lost his sneaker already, but uh, when you saw that even first possession, Berzovich ends up taking Thomas out high. It'll move him everywhere. He's just not gonna defend in the five. Well, Dubar will take a three now. D Stone in and out, and Berzovich able to chase down this rebound. These are two teams that also like to play with pace, so off of misses, expect them to get out and run. Big time matchup here in transition. Rain Smith, a guy who can really shoot it from deep, takes it right side, inside looking for Berzovich. Ball on the floor, out of bounds, and will stay with the Cougars. And look, even though it's the first game of conference play, and we know how important this is, as we talked to Colin Curtin, assistant, special assistant to the head coach and Speedy Claxton, he even said, look, if we win this game, you lose this game. There's still the rest of the season. Yeah. You can't look at it as just being that one. But these are still two very good teams coming off tough non-conference slates. And they start off conference play against each other. They will end conference play against each other down in Charleston in early March. Berzovich, a low post touch. 
and finishes over Jaco Fritz for the game's first points. He's six foot 10, 225 pounds, 13 selection a year ago. As you brought up before, he can shoot, and he can also work inside. Here's Thomas on the handoff, the pump fake. And Thomas lost the handle up with it is Fulton. Now Rain Smith. Berzovic again backing down Fritz. Berzovic off glass. He's got all four for the Cougars. And that's still solid defense from Yako Fritz, not fouling, taking him right up. But Berzovic and those two are almost identical in size. Both listed at 6'10", and they both look it. Hofstra has struggled here on this end of the floor. A couple misses and a turnover. Thomas backing down. Fall away jumper goes. It's that mid-range jumper, the turnaround, and he is so good at scoring. Really came on strong last year, but that is the sixth leading scorer in the entire nation. Fulton, kick out, Burnham, good look at a three, and he buries it. He's a pretty good shooter from downtown. Doesn't shoot a ton, but 47% clip, so it's interesting to see how many more they're going to allow him to take wide open from there. Ben Burnham, the leading scorer for the Cougars, nearly 14 points per game. Again, this is a very balanced team. They play uh, more bench minutes than almost everybody in the country as Fritz can't finish at the rim. So you'll see a lot of different looks here from the Cougars. Now Smith will take a deep three, leaves it short, and Fritz has the rebound. Five point lead here early for Charleston. Tyler Thomas. Uh, Fake pass there, and kind of got caught in between the shot and the pass, and inside Fritz wasn't expecting it. It is a pride turnover. And Hofstra loves to run a little screen up high and have Yako Fritz drop, and a lot of times it's Tyler Thomas who finds him there wide open. You saw it just like that, right? He was in between, like you said, Kevin, so a tough decision. As Bryce Butler, the freshman, makes his first appearance. D2 All-American from a season ago. Here is Butler, catch and shoot three, is good. Charleston has made a couple from deep, and they are out to a hot start, a 10-2 Cougars lead. You knew they were going to be shooting the three ball, but for Hofstra to shoot just 20% to start, that's really kind of the difference maker. But the pride want to go. Most teams want to slow down Charleston. And Thomas has it blocked by Policelli. Fritz up with the loose ball, now Carlos. Spinning in the lane, Jaquan Carlos to the rim for a big run-snapping bucket. Quickly back the other way come the Cougars. Policelli will take the three. Frankie Policelli and Charleston has gotten threes from three different players here in the early going. They use that shot clock very little. Quick catch and shoot. Frankie Policelli, the grad transfer from Stony Brook. Staying in the conference, Thomas's three is short, and Tyler Thomas has struggled to get into a rhythm here early on, Dan. He's already taken five of the eight shots. Policelli, another Charleston. Up 12 in the early going. Frankie Policelli, a couple of threes. It is all Cougars to start, 16 to four. Charleston leading Hofstra just four minutes in. Hi, I'm Chris, and I'm here to talk about Island Federal Credit Union. And I'm Bob from National Big Bank. Island Federal has been providing personal banking services for over 65 years and donated over a million dollars to Long Island-based charities. Nobody loves Long Island more than National Big Bank. We're fully committed to Patch Out, Hop Out, uh, Wantung, uh, Ronco, Renair. No, okay, no, wait, that's not real. You're messing with me now. Island Federal. You can bank on the power of F. Welcome to Buy Cal Chevy of Valley Stream, a family-owned dealership dedicated to providing an exceptional car buying experience. Our knowledgeable and friendly staff are committed to building strong customer relationships and ensuring your needs are met efficiently. We understand that your time is precious, so we've streamlined our process to make your visit efficient and enjoyable. Come visit us today at 709 West Merrick Road, Valley Stream, New York. In the next 30 seconds, a lot will happen at Hofstra. Small things, big things, weird things. The plan and the not so much. 
the whoa, the wow, the what? We know ideas have the power to change everything. That's why we work for them. Reach for them. Refine and rebuild. Ideas are always evolving. And so are we. Hofstra University. A red hot start for Charleston here, 16 4. They lead the pride in the early going. Let's welcome in the third member of our broadcast team tonight, Dylan Brett. Dylan? Guys, Yako Fritz is back in the starting lineup today after missing last game against St. John's with a back injury. But his value to this program cannot be questioned after the starting tab of this season. A special assistant to the head coach, Colin Curtin, said, yeah, Yako may be a transfer, but it feels like he's been here for four years with the experience that he provides. And Yako himself said, where it feels like he's grown the most with Hofstra is with his leadership, being loud on and off the court, encouraging his teammates and helping them grow. Guys? Well, thank you, Dylan. Yako Fritz, you said in the keys to the game there, Dan. Going to be a, a big key trying to slow down Ante Berzovic. Had a little bit of trouble with him in the early going, and now Hofstra's going to need him on the offensive end to try to make up this 12-point deficit. He's having so much fun here. I mean, this is, he said, this is one of his favorite seasons already. Every time I talk to Moses, it's a big smile on his face. But, you know, he knew this was going to be a big moment for him, especially in this game. And I said to him, like, I don't, do you realize how big of an impact you have on this team? He's like, no, 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 it's everywhere. I said, no, you really do. You yeah. have a massive impact on this team because he brings them a different element. So even though, listen, he's had a little bit of a tough time right now in terms of defending, the whole offense right now, this half-court offense, has not been great for Hofstra. Yeah, the Pride just 2 of 8 here to start, while Charleston is 6 of 7 and 4 of 5 from 3. Jaquan Carlos misses a triple, and the Cougars off and running again. Policelli has made 2 from deep. Charleston will take another. This one no good from Jordan Crawford, who checked in at that last timeout. But they get the offensive board and then turn it over. Carlos tied up, and that'll be a foul on Crawford. Again, this is a deep Charleston team. You're going to see bodies you know, coming in and out of this game. And Crawford right off the bench there. Three-point attempt and a foul. It's so interesting because Pat Kelsey runs such a deep bench that he's actually only had in the last six years as a coach, and this includes when he was at Winthrop, He's only had two players average more than 30 minutes in the basketball game in the entire season. Two players in six years. That just shows you how deep he likes to go down his bench. He's a lot of guys who play 15 to 20 minutes a night. Thomas, turnaround jumper is good. Tyler Thomas has now made two from the mid-range here to start. Quickly back the other way, Crawford draws a foul. That is what the Cougars do well, pushing off a make and Crawford will go to the free throw line. Look, that's the exact type of matchup that Hofstra would rather have Tyler Thomas do. You know, get him on that baseline, be able to move him around a little bit. Teams, when they are defending Tyler Thomas well, are ones that are making him move with the basketball. And you see right away, he has to come right back on D. I mean, that took five seconds, and Jordan Crawford's already up the, the whole length of the floor, and he had to take a foul there. So, I mean, that's a really tough situation. Jordan Crawford, redshirt freshman, CAA Rookie of the Week a couple of weeks ago for his performance at the field of 68 tip-off in Boca Raton. Makes both free throws. And the hot start for the Cougars continues. 12-point lead here, just five minutes in. And Thomas on the handoff. Now D-Stone Dubar. Skip pass for Carlos. Right back to Dubar. He'll take it from there. D Stone from downtown. Sixth in the conference in points per game. And a blocking foul on Jaquan Carlos as he hustled back on the other end. Again, Charleston pushing the pace. It was Kobe Rogers who drew it. Dan, tonight's replays are brought to you by the Lantec Group. Yeah, Dubar's been shooting the three ball much, much better already. Now 10 away from his career best in any season and only hitting the beginning of conference play. So they're going to need him to continue to hit that three. He has that mixture between penetrating to the basket and being able to shoot from outside. He's such a, a long player. But now it's different. Now they don't have that same matchup. They're not going to be seeing a lot of teams that play long where Dubar is going to have a tough time. Yeah, you know, in conference play, and more like-sized competition for the Pride. They've been playing so many power conference teams, you know, out of conference, power five teams out of conference, you know, bigger, faster, stronger, as Fulton's three is off the mark. Thomas has the rebound. Pride looking to push. 
Finds Khalil Farmer trailing. End of the game for the first time. Now Dubar. A long floater won't go. Follows his own shot. Count it and one. Well, at first you're kind of wondering, all right, why is Thomas slowing things down here? And, and Charleston did a really good job of transition D. And it just allows another look for D-Stone Dubar. He was kind of that in-between, like we said before, of that mid-range shot. Just try to kind of push it out. You knew he didn't have a lot on it. But what a hustle play. I mean, that is a true hustle play right there by D-Stone Dubar to earn the two points. And this is the free throw. But he's got five straight for the pride. And they've cut this Charleston lead down to seven. Crawford, kick out for Fulton. Now Scott at the top of the key. Fulton around the screen, bounces inside. Nice feed for Butler. I don't know how Bryce Butler was wide open at the right block. The graduate player, two-time Division II All-American. Wide open for C.J. Fulton. Good look for Thomas, misses another. And Tyler Thomas has struggled from deep here to start tonight. And Thomas 0 of 5 from downtown. Burnham shuffled his feet. Now another look at the last Charleston possession. You see Butler hanging out there. Looks like it was Thomas who lost him. Yeah, he got caught right along the baseline there. and That's way too easy for Butler. 11 of his last 15 points normally coming from the free throw line. Dubar, another three is short. Scott has the rebound, and again, Charleston up ahead quickly. Fulton. Rain Smith back in the game. His floater up top for Scott, had it knocked away. Ball loose on the floor. Farmer was out of bounds. You're seeing bodies dive all over the floor on both ends. I mean, you knew it was going to be a physical, tough game. But both of these teams not letting up. After really not shooting well from beyond the perimeter, one of nine. Charleston has done a pretty good job of being able to contain them. A lot of those shots have been contested from downtown. So uh, I think what Hofstra needs to start doing is getting back to that pick and roll that they love so much from the, the, high, uh, the high arc. Eight on the shot clock here. Berzovich will take Fritz one on one. Backing down. Berzovich to the left hand, rims out, and Dubar has the rebound. And Fritz staying strong defensively on Berzovich on that possession. Now Carlos for Farmer. We've got a mismatch with Fritz down low if they can get it to him. Instead, it's Thomas. One on one here against Fulton. Tyler Thomas drives by him. The fadeaway, no good. Charleston picked it up right away. Even with the mismatch and Rain Smith on him. Nice job by Smith being able to stay with the bigger Fritz. And didn't give an angle there to get the ball to Fritz in the low post. Now Berzovich will take it to the low post again, coughs it up. Dubar has Burnham on him. Inside, D Stone, the fadeaway rims out. Hofstra's had some trouble creating in the half court, Dan. Haven't scored in more than two minutes. Now Berzovich in the high post. Looking back door, had it deflected. Butler is on it, blocked by Dubar. Now Jaquan Carlos will settle things down. Charleston a nine point lead here, nine minutes in. The CAA opener between the two best teams in the conference from a season ago. Carlos to his right, has some space, kick out. Farmer, corner three, too much on it. Good look there for Khalil Farmer. Yeah, you still like that look. And now a foul on Farmer on the Rain Smith drive, so it will be Charleston basketball when we come back. Cougars have a nine point lead here, mid first half on the island.
Charleston has a nine-point lead over Hofstra here, mid-first half on the island. The Cougars have won five straight coming in, nine and four in non-conference play as they begin CAA play here tonight. And what a season it was for them last year. We talked about it off the top, Dan, that 20-game winning streak that was snapped by the Pride down in Charleston in late January of last season. They were the CAA tournament champions and then a tight game against San Diego State who went all the way to the national yeah. championship game in that 12-5 matchup in the NCAA tournament. Just a six-point loss for Pat Kelsey's squad that won 31 games last season. Yeah, it was incredible. I mean, just four losses all year. At then number one UNC, Hofstra that, that game, they dropped one against Drexel, and that was a tough matchup, and that was one that they wanted back, and then, of course, they won the NCAA tournament. But that team was so special to watch because they had so many guys who were just, they, they understood their roles. That was yep. it. They were real role guys, you know, like a Ryan Larson, who was a third-team selection. Uh, Pat Robinson, the third, sixth man of the year, was so good off the bench. Dalton Bolin, who was a first-team selection. Everyone, of course, knew about his story uh, when he came over from Division II. And that's what Pat Kelsey likes to do. He doesn't mind going down to D2, bringing kids up. And, and since Kelsey has been a, a head coach, he spent those years at Winthrop, he brought them to three NCAA tournaments. He's brought, you know, Charleston down to one. He has really built a program wherever he goes. And, and such a, a high-energy guy that is so good for the league and so good for the city of Charleston. Now you talk about these two coaches, right? Uh, Speedy Claxton, the CAA Coach of the Year last year, Pat Kelsey, these two guys have both done tremendous jobs in their short times, both of them in their third seasons. And creating you know, really a, a rivalry here. You know, these two teams had such a, a battle last year with Hofstra just edging out Charleston on the tiebreaker for the regular season title and then the Cougars winning the tournament title. And you expect that as long as these two men are, are leading these two programs, you expect this game and these two games, you know, every time they play uh, each season to be extremely competitive matchups. Here's German Plotnikov in the game out of the timeout. Can't knock it down, knocked out of bounds, and will be Charleston Ball, the pride with three substitutes in the game out of the timeout. Plotnikov, Kijan Robinson, and Silas Sunday all checking in. And meanwhile, Tyler Thomas doesn't come out, and he's actually seventh most minutes per game in the entire country. But having Plotnikov back out there and the way he has played, they really have liked his game and kind of opens up a lot for them. He was a real strong defensive player a season ago. So get it, Robinson on that one. Smith will take the three over Farmer. Off the mark from Rain Smith. Thomas able to track down the rebound. See Robinson and Rogers kind of got tangled up just to the right of the hoop. Dijon Robinson. Thomas has Scott on the switch. Drives by him. Pull up jumper. Goes. That's a pretty shot there from that mid-range, and that's where Tyler has actually gotten most of his points today. Actually, uh, I think all of his buckets have yeah. come to the mid-range. All three, and that snaps a scoring drought of more than four minutes for the Pride. Policelli, hand off here for Mayar Wohl. Turning in the lane, Wohl off back iron, no. Scott got up, and that is an offensive goaltend. And he was hanging on the rim as he put that one up and in, so basket interference, the call on James Scott. Kind of a no-doubter on this one, but this kid's going to be so good, yeah. James Scott. I mean, he's 6'11", he's a freshman, fourth youngest player in Division I basketball. His birthday was just in September, he just turned 18. Another good find by the College of Charleston. Yeah, he, two-time CAA Rookie of the Week already. Here he picks up a steal up ahead for Rogers by himself. Plotnikov hustling back but could not get a piece of it and the bucket for Kobe Rogers. It's only the second turnover for Hofstra, but so far Charleston has capitalized on both of them, four points off of turnovers, and that's gonna be a key, not turning over this basketball. Of course, not just today, Kevin, but all conference season, but so big against a team that loves to get extra possessions. Nine point lead for the Cougars. Rogers gets his hand in the passing lane, able to keep it in bounds. Now Rogers, his floater rims out. Scott there to clean it up. It just absolutely caught, especially with James Scott on 
that block. Not much you can do, but you go back to that Dijon Robinson pass. Kind of telegraph that one, looking for Tyler Thomas. Hey, he's going to end up being a guy whose minutes will continue to elevate with a true freshman. Going to be a future star here for Hofstra, but not his best pass. Thomas guarded by Smith. It's a screen from Sunday. Tyler Thomas trapped by Smith. Another tough shot goes. And Thomas up to eight. Eight of the Pride's 15. Now Rogers on the drive. Kicks out for Wool. He'll take the three. Rebound tracked down by Robinson. Pride have not had many opportunities to push here in this first half, Dan. That transition D has been really good, and it's really contained this team. Well, they got a foul on Rain Smith. And Pride basketball when we come back. Tyler Thomas has eight here in the early going. It's Pride trailing by nine. Professional Bull Riders Unleash the Beast Series. 150 pound men face 1800 pound freight trains. And no, we're not talking about the subway. Yeah, we coming. The Unleash the Beast PBR Monster Energy Buck Off at the Garden, presented by Ariat. Only the world's best cowboys survive in the world's most famous arena. And a New York minute is only eight seconds. Yeah, we coming. Get your tickets now at PBR.com and Ticketmaster. Transfer to Hofstra University for a dynamic college experience. Shape your own educational and career path by choosing from over 165 undergraduate programs in a variety of disciplines. Connect with the world through experiential learning, including internship opportunities in nearby Manhattan. Work in cutting edge facilities and research labs. Attend a virtual transfer event to find out how you can be part of the Hofstra Pride. Brooklyn Dip and Burger is open for takeout and delivery. Call the store and check us out on Uber Eats, DoorDash, and Grubhub. We are here for you, and you can rely on Brooklyn Dip and Burger, providing great food safely. 516-222-8000. Hey, Thursday night on Long Island. Happy New Year to you all. Tuning in from wherever you are tonight. Good matchup here to start off CAA play. The Pride and the Cougars and Hofstra. Coming off that tough non-conference schedule, Dan, they've lost four out of five, but you look at their opponents, all four of those losses coming on the road at St. Louis, at Duke, at UNLV, and then a neutral side game down the road at UBS Arena against St. John's on Saturday, a tough five-point loss. You know, they were in all four of those games at points and you know, really trying to take the positives out of tough, you know, competitive games against those Power Five schools. Yeah, St. John's, you know, you played them right down the stretch, and Foul situation wasn't great for them either. They were also without Yako Fritz the entire game. He did not dress. I mean, that was a tough loss that could have went either way. The only one that really they lost and kind of just handed over was the St. Louis loss. Yeah. But I think when you look at that entire schedule, every one of those teams kind of set them up for teams like Charleston, teams that are long, deep, know how to play uh, really a team basketball. And I think that's what really set them up so well. Speedy Claxon will play anybody, anywhere, anytime. He wants the best of the best. It does not matter if they have a 7-6 and six record or a sub-500 record in non-conference play. This is all about getting ready for the CAAs. This is kind of the test, see if it pays off tonight as Thomas can't knock down the three. And Pratt has struggled on the offensive end, though, thus far. Now 7 of 22 from the floor, and Dan, surprisingly, 1 of 11 from three-point range, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country coming in as Charleston misses this one from Fulton. Pride have four of their starting five back in the game here. As Carlos drives, Jaquan Carlos to the reverse. He's going to be the difference maker if Hofstra wants to be able to come back in this. Already he's got a couple points. It's because he has the ability to work off the dribble. He's the one guy on this team that can crash the glass, kind of like you saw maybe like an Aaron Estrada in years past do, yeah. Justin Wright Foreman. He can really take it to the rack. And we talked about Carlos off the top, had a huge game in Hofstra's win down at Charleston last year. Had nine of the final 11 points down the stretch, and as the three is good for Khalil London. Too smooth, Khalil London. He's a local product, Khalil London from Wyandanch. 
Not too far here from the Hofstra campus. Yeah, played at St. Dom's High School. Thomas, good look at a three, the response for the pride. That snaps his skid, one of his first seven from downtown. So if they can start getting him going from beyond the perimeter, that's going to start opening up more looks inside the lane. Thomas has taken half of the Pride's field yeah. goal attempts here, 12 of their 24 shots in this first half. London on the drive, lost the handle. Offensive rebound, Butler puts it back up and in. One of the best teams in the country at attacking the offensive glass. Again, that's Pat Kelsey basketball. Working hard on the glass, outworking your opponent. Fritz, now Dubar. He'll take the three. D Stone again from downtown. His second made three. Up to eight points. Berzovic in the lane. His lefty floater is short. Pride looking to run. Carlos. Kick out. Got a mismatch on Fritz inside. They lob it to him. And good D there from Butler. Wouldn't let Fritz get position, and Carlos threw it out of bounds. Scored his 1,000th point in their last game against St. John's. He is 978 with Hofstra. He started his career at Iowa State. Real difference maker this season, averaging 18 per contest. Yeah, what a level up. And D Stone Dubar has made last year just over 10 points per game. Now at 18 as the three rims out from Butler. Offensive rebound and a tie up as Farmer and London, two Khalils going at it there. The foul is on Khalil Farmer, another look. Give Khalil London credit on this, look at that. They're the hands of Dubar and then they get the foul on Khalil Farmer, his second. London really outworked that one. Burnham, a contested three is short. Another offensive board, but it's taken away by Dubar. Got pulled out of the hands of Kobe Rogers. Now Carlos around the screen. Bouncing for Fritz. Inside, Yako Fritz. First bucket of the night for Fritz. Now Thomas gets his hand in the passing lane. And the Pride are off and running for Dubar. The hop step in the lane. D Stone has the Pride within two. Oh, what a four point swing by Hofstra. They get that pick and roll back. Yako Fritz right to the basket. And a timeout called by Speedy Claxton. Uh, Pat Kelsey will take the timeout here, Dan. Brings us to a break. Pride on a 7-0 run. Late first half. They're back within two.
Well, this has been a first half that has been mostly controlled by Charleston at a double-digit lead for a lot of it, Dan. But Hofstra on a run here as of late. They've cut it down to two. D-Stone Dubar has been the catalyst. They have five points of the last seven for Hofstra. Jaco Fritz having the other two. And since the last media timeout, Hofstra is shooting five of their last six. And this is the kind of game that Hofstra works really well with. It's working in that pick and roll and then also running in transition. Nice little hop step to the right hand, D Stone Dubar playing with a little edge as always. But, you know, if you're going into halftime, considering how poorly you played the yeah. first 10 minutes of this basketball game, you go into halftime either tied or up, you are very happy right now because they have started to play much better. What Charleston is doing really well is they're getting their big men out high. And their big men are, are so uh, athletic that they can guard out high. They can guard from the free throw line out which is kind of taking away a lot of opportunities for Hofstra to work that pick and roll. But if they can start getting it downtown, that will open up their three ball a little bit more. And they also got to work on that transition defense. We saw that, especially in the last five, six minutes. And this was a 12 point Charleston lead just four minutes into this game, 16 to four after the three from Policelli forced a speedy Claxton timeout. And the pride have slowly chipped away. Now on a 7-0 run to get back within two, more good defense here and they pull it away. And it's Dubar getting his hand right on the ball. A pride, a chance to tie it or take the lead. Now Carlos. Pick for Thomas. Tyler Thomas one on one here against Scott. will take a step back three off the mark. Now Rogers. Butler, hands off for Burnham. Looking for Butler on the back door, cut. Kept it in play, but right to Dubar. Try to have numbers here. Dubar will take it himself, going right to the rim. Some contact and no whistle. And Charleston now five on four the other way as Dubar is slow to get back into the play. It's a Rogers three that's off the mark. And the rebound off of Dubar and out of bounds. How about that hustle by D-Stone, though? I mean from one end of the floor to the next, and he was going like a freight train right down to the rack. Obviously wanted the contact and the call, but not getting it. It's a very good officiating crew. It's an experienced crew. Yeah. We haven't seen a lot of ticky-tack fouls. They understand this is a physical game. And just eight combined fouls in the first half. Five on the Pride, three on the Cougars. Smith. A deep three is good. Falling away, tough shot, Rain Smith. Such a smooth three-point shooter. And yeah, he struggled a few games ago. He was 0 for 8 after a nine three-pointer day. Thomas, kick out. Dubar, another. That won't go. Hofstra's taking a lot of threes, as they often do. Now 15 of their 30 field goal attempts in the first half have been threes, and Hofstra just three of 15. Smith, off glass. Back-to-back -back buckets for Rain Smith. He doesn't shoot a lot of two-pointers. Just 14% of his attempts in his career are two-point attempts. Thomas, it's Scott on the switch again. Has it up top, and he's called for the travel. That's a tough runner from Rain Smith. High off glass, and going the opposite way. He's a lefty, mm -hmm. taking it to his right. Still able to knock it down. Native from Australia, had a 14-0 run himself in the semifinal against Towson last year. That pushed them ahead of the Tigers and into the championship game. Third most three-pointers in Charleston history. And Fulton out of bounds. Seventh Charleston turnover. And a turnover battle, something we highlighted early on would be key. Now 7-5, Charleston two more turnovers than the Pride, but the rebounding battle. Charleston out rebounding Hofstra 21-14 here in the first half. Again, Hofstra's not big. That's always the one area that was always going to hurt them. You knew it, but sometimes it's the 
outworking. We saw some of them get outworked early on. Thomas in the lane, falling away. Another tough shot, too much on it. A lot of tough shots in this first half for Tyler Thomas. Rain Smith, Berzovic. Now Smith will bounce back to him. Washington comes up with a loose ball. Rice Washington ahead of the pack. Explosive play by the Michigan man. So good at defending. Comes up with a loose ball and puts it home. Ride back within five, a six second difference between shot and game clock. Berzovic will take the three, leaves it short. Rebound tapped around and they got a foul as Dubar was hit in the back by Policelli. Heads up play by Bryce Washington and then just using that speed and taking it straight to the basket. You've seen his numbers go up and down. It really kind of depends on the game for him. I mean, he's kind of been a staple in this starting lineup all season long, even though the numbers and minutes that he plays aren't a lot in every game. Only played two minutes in the second half last contest, but one of those true three and D kind of guys. 10 seconds on the clock here for the Pride to get one final shot. Carlos gets a screen from Fritz. Now with five, he'll drive it. Carlos, step back, three at the horn, it's good! Big shot, Jaquan Carlos cuts the deficit to two at the break. Seven points for JC. <laughs> kind of just threw his arms up saying, all right, I guess I'll take it. I don't think that was what they drew up, but no question, he was a big impact in this contest in the first. The Player of the Half report brought to you by Island Federal Credit Union. Tyler Thomas, 11 points to lead the way for the Pride in the first half. Another look at Jaquan Carlos. The step back three. <laughs> kind of his hands up, little Michael Jordan esque. Yeah, that's there. exactly hey. what it looked like. So smooth. All that right. That was pretty. Let's send it over to the third member of our broadcast team, Dylan Brett, standing by with Hofstra assistant coach Tom Parada. Here with assistant coach Tom Parada. Coach, what did you like about the way your team closed out that half? I liked the way we closed it out. I didn't like how we started it. Credit to Charleston, they came out and made shot after shot and provided some separation for them. Every time I looked up, it was still in striking distance. I thought we settled down defensively. We got back on defense, defense and then ultimately, we started to make some shots. We still gotta be a lot better in the second half to beat a team like this. Charleston still shooting over 40% from three. What needs to go right defensively for this team to pull out a win? Well, I think we were trying to do some different things. We're gonna reevaluate it right now and see what the best thing to do is. It ultimately comes down to getting back, getting back in transition, dragging this team into the half court. And then when a shot goes up, fellas, it seems like there's seven or eight guys crashing the glass. We gotta get rebounds and we gotta push it back and do what we do best. Thanks for your time, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Coach Parada. Hofstra trails Charleston by two at the break. When we come back, Dan will chat with Hofstra men's lacrosse head coach Seth Tierney for a season preview. That's next. Charleston, a two-point lead here at the break. art labs in addition athletic activity is centered around our division one coaches and facilities our employees are all carefully trained and thoroughly vetted through a comprehensive background check we are busy preparing for traditional Hofstra summer camp experience but please know we go above and beyond all health and safety protocols to keep you and your family safe we are continually preparing and are ready for the changing state of public health. This is Terry Ryan, the camp director at Hofstra Summer Camps. Our summer camp program goes from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., four sessions, seven weeks. Includes transportation and a hot catered lunch buffet. We offer three different models for the camp. We offer a specialty camp, a learning institute, and the overpopular sports academy. The famous David S. Mack Sports and Exhibition Complex, also known as the Hofstra Arena. Connected to the Hofstra Arena is the Physical Education Building. Physical Education Building and the arena are the main hub. It's the area where they get picked up and they get dropped off. All the facilities here at Hofstra, the softball field, the stadium across the street, the Division I University level fields are used by your campus. Also out here, we do our special days, one of the highlights of summer camp. In the past, we've had 
carnivals set up, we've had crazy water relays, we've had DJ parties outside, and also color wars. It's just a great place for the children to get out in the green, run around, and enjoy some fun. Hofstra USA is our premier dining facility for the Hofstra summer camps. There are numerous rooms inside for the campers to eat. All food is expertly prepared by our catering service right here on campus. Also, our nurses monitor any food allergies. We're able to take control of that and make sure that your child gets the food they need. At Hofstra Summer Camps, we are very lucky to be around some of the finest facilities in the world. We have science labs, we have computers, we have beautiful classrooms. All the students that come to Hofstra as campers get to experience Red Cross certified swim instruction each day. Also note, we follow all the strict guidelines of the American Camping Association, and also the Nassau County Board of Health. We are fully staffed with water safety instructors and also the Hofstra lifeguards stay on duty all summer to protect your child and make it a safe environment. If you would like further information, we can be reached at 516-463-CAMP. Send us any questions you may have at ce-camps at hofstra.edu. Welcome back to the MAC here at halftime. We're pleased to be joined by the 18th year head coach of the Hofstra Pride men's lacrosse team, Seth Tierney. And coach, I guess it's so crazy to think 18 years in this place. I mean, how quick has it gone for you? Uh, it seems like yesterday when I first got the job as the head coach, spent six years as an assistant. Uh, the place is just special. It really is. The people, uh, all the players, uh, all the assistant coaches, uh, again, it's why we do it, and uh, and I can't believe, like you said, it makes me feel a little old, but 18 years, but it feels like yesterday. Let's talk about this upcoming season. The schedule is absolutely packed. You get Navy, you get UNC at home, you get Yale at home. I mean, you're going on the road to play Rutgers. How special was it to have a schedule like this that you're going to compete every single contest? Yeah, I'm not sure what was going on when I, we made that schedule, but we're awfully proud of it. We really are. Um, we we'll love what the guys are about this year. Had a good fall, stayed healthy. We've had a little bit of an injury issue the last couple of years, but we're hopeful to stay a little healthier this year, and uh, and we're looking forward to it. Again, you want to be one of the best, you got to play the best. So we're looking for uh, we're looking forward to Carolina and Yale at our place, and certainly Navy Rutgers on the road. And let's not forget about you know Drexel, Delaware, Towson, Fairfield, all those guys as well. So it'll be a, it'll be a wild one. When you look at this team, of course, last year you mentioned, of course, the injuries the last number of seasons, but now it seems like you have that offensive firepower back for this group. Uh, who's standing out for you so far in fall ball and really for this team for this upcoming season? Yeah, it's a lot of wheel lacrosse right now. Uh, I don't know if anybody is totally standing out, but they're all playing unselfish. Everyone eats a little bit. Um, they bought into it. Coach Gongas, uh, you know, on the offensive end, is doing a great job with the offense. Coach Gorman's doing a great job with the defense. And uh, we're looking forward to a couple of guys stepping up. Uh, but certainly, you know, what we, what we saw in the fall was promising. Um, the fall means nothing. And we got to get to work. Certainly January 17th, the first day of practice. Well, you have one of the best face-off guys in the country, and he also gets to don that number 27 for Nick Calori. How special was it for the qualities you saw from Chase Patterson this season that earned that 27? Yeah, it's almost unfair to the rest of the guys on our team that Chase plays on this team because he is just he, he's just a wonderful human being. Really, he earns 27. Uh, the way he handles himself on and off the field, been working really hard. Coming back for a fifth year, and uh, you know we're expect we're expecting some big things from him. We're working him hard, but again, lacrosse is a possession sport, and we need him to win. Well, Coach, only really a month away. As crazy as that is, good luck this season. We can't wait to see you out at Stewart Stadium. Uh, thanks for the coverage. We appreciate. It. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. The head coach Seth Tierney will be right back. Breakdown for second half action here on MSG Networks. Hi, I'm Chris, and I'm here to talk about Island Federal Credit Union. And I'm Bob from National Big Bank. Island Federal has been providing personal banking services for over 65 years and donated over a million dollars to Long Island-based charities. Nobody loves Long Island more than National Big Bank. We're fully committed to Patch Out, Hop Out, uh, Wan Chung, uh, Ronco, Renair, no, okay, no, wait, that's not real. You're messing with me now. Island Federal, you can bank on the power of F.
Welcome to Baikal Chevy of Valley Stream, your trusted family-owned dealership deeply rooted in our community. At Baikal Chevy, we take immense pride in being part of our community and are dedicated to providing not just an exceptional car buying experience, but also giving back to the neighborhoods we serve. Whether you're looking for a brand new Chevy or a reliable pre-owned vehicle, we're here to serve you. Come and visit us at 709 West Merrick Road, Valley Stream, New York. In the next 30 seconds, a lot will happen at Hofstra. Small things, big things, weird things. The plan and the not so much. The whoa, the wow, the what? We know ideas have the power to change everything. That's why we work for them, reach for them, refine and rebuild. Ideas are always evolving and so are we. Hofstra University. Professional bull riders unleash the Beast Series. 150 pound men face 1800 pound freight trains. And no, we're not talking about the subway. Yeah, we coming. The Unleashed Beast PBR Monster Energy Buck Off at the Garden, presented by Ariat. Only the world's best cowboys survive in the world's most famous arena. And a New York minute is only eight seconds. Yeah, we coming. Get your tickets now at PBR.com and Ticketmaster. Hey, uh, I didn't order any pizza. Jake from State Farm. After you saved me so much dough on insurance with that Parker promo, I devised a promo for you. Here's the deal, Parker. State Farm offers everyone surprisingly great rates. Right. Pepperoni pockets. Cuckoo crusty. There's no promo. It's just great rates. And a cider ranch. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Halftime at the MAC, CAA opener. It has been a good one so far. A two-point game, Charleston on top of Hofstra, 34 to 32. When we come back, we'll get you set for the second half of action between the Pride and the Cougars. Brooklyn Dip and Burger is open for takeout and delivery. Call the store and check us out on Uber Eats, DoorDash, and Grubhub. We are here for you, and you can rely on Brooklyn Dip and Burger, providing great food safely. 516-222-8000. A university-based camp provides campers with a world of opportunity. At Hofstra Summer Camps, campers in kindergarten through high school can explore their passions, find their creative side, or learn from Division I coaches in over 50 different camps, taught by New York State teachers or professionals. Campers will make friends and memories to last a lifetime while enjoying a summer that is completely unique to them. Your child's amazing summer experience starts at Hofstra Summer Camps. Transfer to Hofstra University for a dynamic college experience. Shape your own educational and career path by choosing from over 165 undergraduate programs in a variety of disciplines. Connect with the world through experiential learning, including internship opportunities in nearby Manhattan. Work in cutting edge facilities and research labs. Attend a virtual transfer event to find out how you can be part of the Hofstra Pride. Hi, I'm Chris, and I'm here to talk about Island Federal Credit Union. And I'm Bob from National Big Bank. Island Federal has been providing personal banking services for over 65 years and donated over a million dollars to Long Island-based charities. Nobody loves Long Island more than National Big Bank. We're fully committed to Patch Out, Hop Out, uh, Wan Chung, uh, Ronco, Renair, no, okay, no, wait, that's not real. You're messing with me now. Island Federal, you can bank on the power of F. Start of the second half here in Hempstead, a two-point game between Charleston and Hofstra in the CAA opener, 34-32. Welcome back here courtside. Kevin and Dan with you. Thanks for making us a part of your Thursday evening 
Yeah, and that was kind of the tale of two halves in the first half alone. Charleston dominant early, out to an early 12-point lead just four minutes in, but Hofstra kind of chipped away, went on that late run, and it's just a two-point game here at halftime. It's kind of remarkable to think, and then, of course, that Jake Juan Barlow's three-pointer at the very end of the half, that kind of, uh, I'm sure Pat Kelsey's talking about that one in the locker room before they came out here for the second half. But look, Hofstra did not play well in the first 10 minutes of this game. There's no question. They were taking tough shots, but give a lot of credit to the Charleston defense and what they were able to do, push him up high, uh, really make tough three-point shots, and they were winning the glass. That was the yeah. big key in this, and moving in transition, exactly how they like to play. Then things started to change a little bit for Hofstra as they were able to start to move the ball a little bit more. D Stone Dubar was really a big catalyst for it, but you know, Jaquan Carlos, seven points. He played such a good first half. It was quiet, but still came in those key moments. Let's get a look at the first half stats. Dan, you mentioned the rebounding battle going to be key tonight. 22-15 in favor of Charleston in the first half. And the three-point shooting, these two teams like to shoot a lot of them. About 50% of the shots in this game have been from beyond the arc. Charleston, 6 of 16. Hofstra, 4 of 16. You expect those numbers uh, to continue in the uh, in here in the second half and you know, look at the free throw numbers this has been a physical game but the officials have let them play yeah. only three total free throw attempts in that first half and nine of the the 14 buckets are only made by two players for Hofstra and they've been able to go to the basket too and you know we haven't really seen too much which has been really good to see also they're letting them play and you love that especially at this point of the season you know it's a conference game physical teams but you know Hofstra's so good at getting themselves to the line that's something that they have excelled with but, you know, if you're not getting there, you're not earning those other buckets, you got to make it work in different ways. So I would expect Topshire to come out here in the second half, kind of swinging the way they were back in the first, you know, at least the, the tail end of the first. When they play in transition, they play so much more fluid. And you yeah. can see that, those first sets, or sometimes second looks. When they start to overthink, I feel like, when you're seeing that second, third one, you're like, oh, okay, we don't really love this option. They just kind of lose that mojo that they have. So that's exactly what you want to see from this starting five coming back out here in the second half. Same starting fives on both sides here to open up the second half. It will be Charleston basketball. Cougars in the road blacks. Pride in the home whites. Comes in for Fulton, and we are underway here in half number two. Berzovic in the high post. Hands off for Burnham. Pump fakes on the three. And ben Burnham for Policelli. Hofstra wanted to travel there on Burnham. Doesn't, uh, don't get the call. Now Berzovic dribbled it off his foot. Carlos pulls it away. Good help defense there from Jaquan Carlos. Carlos to the rim. How about that for Jaquan Carlos to end the first half and start the second? Well, he just ripped that out of the big six foot ten hands. Back-to-back -back plays separated by a halftime break. The big three and then the steal and the bucket. And Jaquan Carlos on a personal 5-0 run to tie this game. Charleston fans absolutely despise Jaquan Carlos. <laughs> 13 of 15 points in the second half last year led them to that big run. Here's Carlos, has it deflected. Thomas is on it. Fall away jumper, and the Pride are on top. And that ball being knocked out actually helped Tyler Thomas have some open space, and he'll make that almost nine times out of ten. And Thomas has been good for mid-range tonight. Not so much from beyond the arc, just one of eight from three. Berzovic sets up Policelli for a deep triple. Frankie Policelli, the response for Charleston. Three-year player at Stony Brook, led the league in rebounds last year, and Pat Kelsey got another good one that kind of shirt up an area that they wanted to get. A good rebounder who can also shoot. And Frankie Policelli last year with the Seawolves had 15 double-doubles. Thomas, kick out, Dubar open three, can't knock it down. Burnham blows by Carlos Dubar up to meet him at the rim. The Charleston bench wanted a foul, don't get it. Now Carlos wide open, he'll take it to the rim. Jaquan Carlos, now Dubar. Settles it down, driving on Policelli. D-Stone for Fritz, draws a foul. 
Another look. The first play of the half, it was Carlos, the defense into offense to start this run for the Pride. Berzovic is one of the strongest players in this conference, and he just ripped it out of his paws. Nicely done by Jaquan Carlos. And we haven't seen a ton of fouls, as you just mentioned before, Kevin, you know, and to be able to get themselves to the stripe is obviously so important, but it has been really a very physical game. You like the game you've been seeing from D. Stone Dubar. He's been getting right underneath the basket. He's been bodying up, and he's another guy who's a really big, strong player in this league. There are not many D. Stone Dubars in this league in terms of size and length. And you've got a matchup tonight of two four men who bring that. You know, Palacelli and Dubar, both guys with a lot of size who can both step out and shoot it. We've seen that tonight. Palacelli has made three threes, and Dubar has made a couple. Here is Palacelli. He'll take another. Frankie Palacelli feeling it. This one pops in and out. Pride looking to push here with Carlos. Thomas, a deep three. Got it. In rhythm for Tyler Thomas, his second make from deep. Hofstra is getting Charleston to shoot some threes, but they're winning those rebounds after on the long rebounds. That's huge. Fulton inside. That'll count for C.J. <laughs> Fulton. That was a pass, and it went straight down for Fulton. Yeah, he was looking for Scott underneath to try and tap it in, and he placed it so perfectly over the basket that it went in. Oh, I'd love to hear C.J. Fulton's thoughts right now on that one. He'll take it. Charleston back within two. Dubar the lob inside and draws a foul on Smith. Another look at this from Fulton. That's 100% a lob. And it doesn't matter. In the scorebook, it comes up as yeah, a field goal. Right, if you don't watch this game, <laughs> you're looking to say, oh, C.J. Fulton, his first two points of the night. They had four in their last contest. Again, not a guy who's going to shoot a ton, but real good assist to turnover ratio. Top 25 in the country. After getting themselves to the stripe already early, only had one free throw attempt in the first half, and that was an end one that was missed by D. Stone Dubar. The Pride are able to get some of their big men underneath. That's where they're working here. They're fronting the defense, forcing them now to drop back a little more because that's going to open up the three ball. And the Pride 4-4 four four from the free throw line here to open up the second half. Dubar up to 12. And the Pride have a four-point lead. Knocked away by Carlos. More good D. Sets up Dubar ahead of the pack. Jaquan Carlos doing it on both ends. Boy, that steal, another thing of beauty. He was right on it. And Carlos nearly had another one there. Now Butler on the curl. His floater goes. I know you give the bucket right after, but you love the transition offense here from defense to offense. And Pat Kelsey's running down the floor. Did not like, I guess, a call that didn't go his way. Fritz looking for Dubar, threw it right to Rain Smith. Now Palacelli, a blocking foul called on Carlos. And that's the second time they're going to get Carlos for a block. He thought he squared up enough. After Bench thought he squared up enough. So we were talking at halftime that, you know, this game has been physical, but nobody's really been getting themselves to the line. Now we're getting a few more whistles, and neither coach or lack of, and <laughs> both coaches are getting upset. Rodgers has it taken away by Fritz. And turnovers on both ends here to start the second half. Thomas falling away in the lane. That was another tough one, and he missed it. Policelli driving on Fritz. Offensive foul. Yako Fritz draws the charge. Jaquan Carlos, a couple of takeaways here setting up D. Stone Dubar. It's the Pride lead it by four. 
Brooklyn Dip and Burger is open for takeout and delivery. Call the store and check us out on Uber Eats, DoorDash, and Grubhub. We are here for you, and you can rely on Brooklyn Dip and Burger, providing great food safely. 516-222-8000. Welcome to Buy Cal Chevy of Valley Stream, a family-owned dealership dedicated to providing an exceptional car buying experience. Our knowledgeable and friendly staff are committed to building strong customer relationships and ensuring your needs are met efficiently. We understand that your time is precious, so we've streamlined our process to make your visit efficient and enjoyable. Come visit us today at 709 West Merrick Road, Valley Stream, New York. The Hofstra Dance Team entertaining the crowd here on a Thursday evening at this timeout. Pride with a four-point lead here, Dan, 45-41. We knew this would be a good game. Maybe didn't expect you know, how good Charleston would come out. You know, it looked like they had an opportunity really to kind of run away with this game early on. A 12-point lead just four minutes in. Pride have battled back, and now here a good start to the second half for Hofstra. 13-7 outscoring Charleston here to start the second to take this four-point lead added to the fact that Hofstra, which generally shoots the three ball really well, is shooting under 30%. I, I mean, that they're shooting 10% less than they normally do on a normal given night yeah. from downtown. That's a big difference. So, you know, if they start getting that three ball going, and that's going to open things up if they start to get the ball down low. And you brought that up all game. One of the guys who's done this in the second half, how about Jake Juan Carlos? Yeah. It's two points, but... Three assists and two steals in this half alone in yeah. four minutes of four play. Four and a half minutes, yeah. It's, he, he's just playing at a different level. You know, you, you look at what D-Stone has been able to do also. Dubar has been all over the place. He's kind of been consistent here, but Carlos has always kind of been that quiet guy who, who gets the bucket at the right moment. Well, we talked about him off the top for a reason. He yep. was so key to Hofstra's win at Charleston a season ago, and he has been a key here tonight to the Pride coming back to take the four-point lead here. Hofstra basketball out of the timeout. Dubar guarded by Burnham. Now Thomas, another tough shot, left it well short. And Tyler Thomas, pretty much any time he has open space tonight, is putting it up. He's taken 18 shots already. Seven of 18 from the floor, two of nine from three. And Butler backing down Dubar. Kick out for Burnham. He'll drive it. Burnham in the lane. He gets the floater to go. And Burnham was wide open out there on the wing. Just found a, a nice open space right at the free throw line. Dubar, another three, is short. Chance to tie or take the lead here for Charleston. Butler double team sets up Crawford for an open three, rims out. Real good look by the redshirt freshman, one time rookie of the week himself. Now Carlos into the paint, coughed it up. Butler is up with the loose ball. Butler. Over Thomas, the hook shot goes, and four straight for Charleston. The tie it at 45. Bryce Butler, second West Liberty player to finish his time at Charleston. The third actually one to try and finish his time at Charleston. Dalton Bolin and Pat Robinson. Last two pretty season. good players yeah, last year. It's, Pat Kelsey loves going to the D2 level, does not mind. Come up here and play. We know you can, and West Liberty is one of the top teams in the Division II level. And Thomas has it poked away. Good defense there from Kobe Rogers. Pride have now turned it over a couple possessions in a row. 6-0 run here for Charleston. Now Burnham. Burnham will take a three. Ben Burnham again rims out. Pride up ahead for Thomas. Transition triple short. You're okay with that shot still. You know, you want your best shooter to have a wide open look from an area that he normally makes it. Rogers on the scoop, has it knocked away. 
Now Dubar for Carlos, open three. Can't knock it down. Pride have gotten some good looks the last couple possessions, really have struggled over their last five, haven't scored in almost four minutes. Butler over Thomas off glass, an 8-0 Cougars run, and they have the lead back. This guy had 32 points in the D2 National Championship game last year that they ended up falling in, but the guy can also pass, he can shoot. Kelsey thinks his passing is the most underrated part of his game. Now Dubar, he'll drive it. D-Stone, tough shot, draws a foul. That was a physical drive from D-Stone Dubar. And he'll have a chance here to tie it at the stripe. Another look at Butler, who's really given Charleston some good minutes off the bench tonight, Dan. Yeah, he has. And, you know, 2,000 career points at the D1 and D2 level, 1,900 at West Liberty. During his time there, you know, he comes from a family of basketball players. He does. Dad played Robert Morris in Eastern Kentucky. His brother played at Charlotte, Holy Cross, pro player in Finland. And Dubar here drawing himself some, some more contact. Butler's just another one of those guys who come off the bench, had not start in any games this year, but still plays a ton of minutes. Just another important role for a team that's full of depth. A lot of substitutes at this whistle. Four new players on the floor for Charleston. Pride gets Silas Sunday, Khalil Farmer in the game, and it looks like Dubar is going to take a seat as well here as he makes it, and German Plotnikov will give D. Stone a breather here in a tie ball game. Plotnikov who missed a couple of games during the non-conference slate to an injury. So important to have back in this lineup Real glue guy. A little London. Guarded by Plotnikov. Now Butler driving on Farmer. Butler draws a foul. He's been the go-to guy here in the second half for Charleston. Bryce Butler will go to the free throw line when we come back. We've got a tie ball game. 47 apiece. Here on the island, Charleston and Hofstra in a battle. No surprise, the three-pointers have been flying here tonight in a tie game. For more on that, let's shoot sideline to Dylan Brett. Dylan? Hofstra's always been one of the highest scoring mid-major teams in the country, but this year they're doing it in a new way with the three ball. Hofstra currently ranks 15th nationally in three-point attempts per game, and tonight over half of their attempts from the field have come from downtown. When asked about the shift in style offensively, Coach Colin Curtin simply said, we like being unorthodox. We like having four and five guys out there that can shoot the three, dribble, pass, and shoot at all times. It's all about making teams uncomfortable and finding what works for us. Dan, Kevin. 
Well, thank you, Dylan. Now, Hofstra has always been you know, a team predicated on guard play. Dan, we know that over the years. So many talented guards, but you know, it feels like, as Dylan pointed out there, maybe a bit of a shift this year. Not necessarily one ball-dominant guy as we've seen, right, with Aaron Estrada, with Justin Wright Foreman in years past. You know, you go back to Charles Jenkins, Speedy himself, right, yeah. from many years ago. It's a, it's a team effort. It's multiple guys who can, as Dylan pointed out, drive. Multiple guys who can pass, and really all guys on the floor who can shoot threes at all times. So you talk about passing. I mean, Hofstra is top 65 in assist percentage on field goals, meaning that they're assisting on 57% of their field goals. It's actually up uh, almost 10% from a year ago. If you want to start talking about some analytics. And also in terms of connecting on three-pointers, they have hit 10 or more threes in a game in seven, oh, excuse me, in nine of the 13 games this season. Uh, that's just ridiculously good numbers that they've been able to do, tied for fourth most in the NCAA. So, you know, they have been able to shoot that three ball, but it helps when you have multiple guys who can do it. Butler, two for two from the line. Out of the timeout in Charleston, back in front by two. Fried haven't made a field goal in almost five minutes. Uh, really been shut down after a hot start to the second half. Carlos, he'll drive it, sets up Farmer. Good look at a three, Khalil Farmer. It's Sunday there on the offensive glass. That did not touch the rim, so Pride up just four on the shot clock. Carlos has to put one up, and it'll be a shot clock violation. It's not very often you see two shots in a possession not even hit the rim. Yeah. And that last one, Jaquan Carlos had a nice look on the step back. Farmer had a really good look from the corner, too. Fulton inside for Policelli. He's got a mismatch on Carlos. Kicks out for Butler. Bryce Butler to the spin move. Left hand draws another foul. Oh, it looks like Bryce Butler is starting to heat up here in this second half especially. He's got some pretty good size, but again, he doesn't mind getting to the basket. He's strong. 6'5", 205 is what he's listed as. Not afraid to go right to the rack. Now you can tell he's just a basketball player. Mm -hmm. A guy who can do a lot of different things. Bryce Butler, you, you touched on his background, the Division II transfer from West Liberty. He has been a big time player in this game for Charleston. Misses both free throws. And the Pride catch a break, and they've got it back here down two. Dubar back in the game for the Pride. Thomas gets it to him. And Stone will drive it. Bowing by Policelli. Can't lay it in. Sunday on the offensive glass. Double teamed, able to dribble out of trouble. Now Thomas has Berzovic on him. Had it deflected and taken away by Fulton. Two on two come the Cougars. Now Policelli, the trailer on the drive. Count the bucket and one for Frankie Policelli. go on the other end, you like that rebound from Silas Sunday, but because Hofstra's been trying to come back transition D because they're so worried about how quick Charleston plays, he had nowhere to go, so it was kind of a wasted possession. And then Policelli is bullying his way to the basket. Thousand point score. Hit the 1K mark a couple of games ago. Started his career at Dayton, playing just 94 minutes, but they have missed some free throws here down the stretch, so you're Pat Kelsey, you're hoping that that is not one that's going to hurt them. And Charleston missed three in a row here from the line, no, four of seven for the game. Carlos draws a foul. Tom Smith, his third. We'll check in on the foul trouble. Khalil Farmer has four for the pride. Smith, three for Charleston, the only two guys with more than two in the game. Carlos gets downhill. Jaquan Carlos, count it, and one! Now Dan, you talked about it earlier on. Carlos is really the one guy in the pride who can get downhill off the dribble in the paint. We've seen it a couple times, and they're the perfect example. 
you know, last game he had a really tough matchup. And again, Joe Soriano from St. John's, another big, strong player, actually from Stepanak High School, so New York kid, stayed here in the New York area. And, and he wasn't, he really didn't have an issue with going up against a guy who was honestly almost seven, eight inches taller than yeah. him, right, and taking him off the dribble. And you see the same exact thing with Berzovich. Six foot ten, did not mind, attacks right at him. Kind of knows how to weave his way in and out and get himself to the basket. That's a big three-point play. And Carlos with the free throw. Up to 12 points. He's got five assists. Smith, good look at a three, is off the mark. Policelli, the offensive rebound. Kick out. Berzovic will take it from deep. Rims out. Policelli has another board. Jump ball is the call that will give possession to Hofstra. Got to give a lot of credit to D-Stone Dubar in this game. I mean, the way he has been attacking the glass has seven rebounds, but there's so many more that obviously don't fall into the stat sheet just because of what he's been able to do of being an intimidating force down low. He has not had any trouble getting physical down there, fighting for every loose ball. Had himself a nice game. Thomas has Berzovic on him. Pump fakes on the three. Now Carlos. He'll take it. Jaquan Carlos is short. Offensive rebound for Thomas. Dumps it inside for Dubar. He's got Berzovic. Takes it. Dubar, the pump fake and the finish. And that's you have to also watch with the D-Stone Dubar because he is someone who can shoot from the perimeter. So you get him in a one-on-one -on -one matchup like that, it's not always easy on how you're going to guess. Ride back up one. Policelli driving by Dubar with the left hand. Fritz, a big rebound. Now Carlos tripped up, and that'll be a foul. They get Rain Smith. It's his fourth, and they do. So that is one to keep an eye on here with still 8.44 to play. That also gives Charleston their sixth team foul. So next one, Hofstra will be shooting for the remainder. Another look at Dubar. Put his shoulder down, created the space. The pump fake got Berzovic up in the air a bit and able to finish over him. He's listed at six foot eight. I always bring this up. He wasn't at six foot eight. He's really not six foot eight. It's a little bit shorter. I gave him a hard time about it one day. But if you know anything about D-Stone Dubar, he, he likes to joke. He's got a, a real fun personality. Very interesting person to be around, but he's really funny. So. You know, for him, to what he's able to do is that he has that big physical presence, and not many guys in this league have that kind of speed and athleticism and length, right? He's got that high major body type, yeah. but he's playing here at the mid-major level, and I think that's what makes him such a mismatch when he's on. And the difference is this year, he's been on for every game. In the last two seasons, there have been some lulls, right? Peaks yeah, and consistency. valleys. Yeah. yeah, so now that he's been that consistent guy, that real number two or number one guy, it's been huge. Crawford can't knock down the three. And a foul on Charleston going after the rebound. It's on Kobe Rogers, and that is the eighth team foul. So Carlos was shooting there because it was the seventh team foul earlier. So he made both ends of the one and one, and now Dubar will go to the line here for a one and one. And it happens again because D Stone Dubar on the defensive glass. It's the way he's been attacking the rim on the defensive end against one of the better offensive rebounding teams in the country. The first one bouncing all around the rim and out. And Charleston starts the other way down three. And Burnham splitting the D. Ben Burnham, tough take, can't finish. Dubar, another big rebound. That's the 10th for D. Stone Dubar, another double-double for him. Nice defense also by Yako Fritz, not fouling in that situation. Arms are straight up, made it difficult. Fourth double-double of the season for D. Stone. 18 points, 10 rebounds. He'll take a deep three, leaves it short. Now Rodgers turns on the Jets, kick out Butler. Inside, Scott by himself for the jam. Boy, Butler, you know, brought it up before that Pat Kelsey has said, even in the offseason, he thinks his most underrated quality is his passing. You saw it right there. That was a real pretty pass to find James Scott right at the block. 
The freshman big man finishes it. And Charleston back within one. Two very high scoring teams playing a low scoring game tonight. 54-53. Thomas, the pump fake. Now Burnham up in the air, elbow jumper short, but Fritz the offensive board. Now Thomas a three. Big shot, Tyler Thomas, his third made triple. He's been leaving some of those shots short tonight. Burnham in and out. Ben Burnham's had, that happened maybe three times tonight. Halfway down and out. Not getting any road rolls. Tyler Thomas getting a friendly bounce. The offensive rebound from Fritz. Right back to Tyler. Knocks down the three, and the Pride are up four. Welcome to Bike House Chevy of Valley Stream, your trusted family-owned dealership deeply rooted in our community. At Bike House Chevy, we take immense pride in being part of our community and are dedicated to providing not just an exceptional car buying experience, but also giving back to the neighborhoods we serve. Whether you're looking for a brand new Chevy or a reliable pre-owned vehicle, we're here to serve you. Come and visit us at 709 West Merrick Road, Valley Stream, New York. Professional bull riders unleash the Beast Series. 150 pound men face 1800 pound freight trains. And no, we're not talking about the subway. Yeah, we coming. The Unleash the Beast PBR Monster Energy Buck Off at the Garden, presented by Ariat. Only the world's best cowboys survive in the world's most famous arena. And a New York minute is only eight seconds. Yeah, we coming. Get your tickets now at PBR.com and Ticketmaster. Hey, uh, I didn't order any pizza. Jake from State Farm. After you saved me so much dough on insurance with that Parker promo, I devised a promo for you. Here's the deal, Parker. State Farm offers everyone surprisingly great rates. Right. Pepperoni pockets. Cuckoo crusty. There's no promo. It's just great rates. And a cider ranch. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Fans, today's State Farm agent of the game is Sandra Simpson. Visit Sandra in Wanta to get a quote for your auto, renters, and life insurance needs. We've got a four-point game here at the MAC, 57-53, under seven to play in the CAA opener between Hofstra and Charleston. And, Dan, we talked about the rebounding battle being so key tonight. It was Charleston out-rebounding Hofstra in the first half, somewhere the Pride have struggled all season long, really over the last number of years, with their lack of size inside. The second half rebounding battle has been a totally different story. Hofstra has 18 rebounds compared to Charleston's nine in this second half and five offensive rebounds. That's huge. I, I mean, that's if they held them to just one offensive rebound, Charleston, in the second half, the area of their game that is one of their biggest strengths and one of the big reasons has been because of D-Stone, Dubar, and Jaco Fritz, what they've been able to do on the glass. They've been winning those battles and even ones that aren't coming down as rebounds, they're, they're still causing a lot of havoc right around the paint. So you want to see, and, and you're Speedy Claxon, I think you're, you're pretty proud of your guys right there inside the lane and what they've been able to do. That's why they are up by four right, at this point. Charleston just one of their last seven from the floor. Back by Rogers, Pride will keep it. Yako Fritz battling on the glass, he'll shoot one and one. Second personal against Kobe Rogers. And again, that is a mismatch down low between Fritz and Rogers. And Rogers just kind of puts his arms up right after. Only a six foot three guy against the big six foot ten Yako Fritz. Fritz misses the front end. Quickly up ahead. Fulton, corner three. Big swing for the Cougars. Hofstra has left their last two free throws, the front end of one and ones out there. So they really are leaving some points out there on the free throw line here in the second half. Pride again slowing it down here in the half court. It has been a slower paced game than we expected with these two teams as Carlos got tripped up and that'll be a travel. Kind of tripped over his own feet there. Another look, off the miss, two passes to a wide open three for Charleston. That is efficient offense. 
and they move the ball so quickly. It's what we saw in that first half. It's one of the big reasons why they were able to take such an early lead. Chance to take the lead back here on this possession. Policelli. Cross court pass. An extra pass for Butler. He'll spin again in the lane. Out for Policelli. Five on the shot clock. Cougars have to go here. Deep three blocked by Dubar. Good D there from D Stone Dubar. Are you surprised how slow Hofstra's taking it here on the offensive end, Dan? A little bit, because they still like to run fast. It doesn't matter who they're playing, even if they're playing a team who scores high possessions, but Thomas, a deep three, is short. They also are running a shorter bench, remember. I think that's another piece of it, too. You know, Charleston able to run because of how deep they are. Fulton from the opposite corner is an air ball. Butler on the offensive glass, no, and Dubar... Taken down, he's out of bounds. Wanted a foul call there, does not get it. Instead lands out of bounds. And will be Charleston basketball. Go back to the last possession, that strong D there from D Stone. He's done it in a lot of different ways. And this time he can defend out on the perimeter. Policelli can shoot from out there. That's the one thing that, of course, makes him so dangerous is that he has that ability to shoot from downtown. Now the official is going to discuss here. So that last play, I believe it was the shot clock, whether it was a change of possession or not here. So they're going to keep 20 on the shot clock here for Charleston. Fulton, pump fakes on the three, bouncing for Berzovich. Beautiful setup from the Cougars. You're not stopping that with the big Ante Berzovich coming right at you from the block. Cougars back in front by a point. Hofstra hasn't scored in two and a half minutes. Thomas will pump fake on the three. Now will take a step back from the corner. No good. Another tough shot for Tyler Thomas. Rogers sets up Butler for a three. Bryce Butler from deep. Big game player Bryce Butler. Nice look from the wing. What a swing here by the College of Charleston. An 8-0 run for the Cougars to turn a four-point Hofstra lead here into a four-point Charleston lead. Carlos, hop step in the lane, his floater short. Hofstra's really struggled to get anything going on the offensive end. Now Berzovich, he'll take the three. Ante Berzovich from deep. Timeout, Speedy Claxton. An 11-0 run for the Cougars. And Ante Berzovich as Charleston with a seven-point lead looking for a CAA season opening win on the road.
Charleston has come back on an 11-0 run here to take a seven-point lead on the road at Hofstra, 64-57. Dan, it seems like you know, the Cougars have kind of found their groove again on the offensive end after struggling a lot of this second half. And Hofstra, meanwhile, has gone really cold on that end of the floor. Yeah, I, that's the big issue, right? It, you're also getting some good buckets from a lot of different guys. And Butler is 11 points here in the second half. That's going to be one of the biggest keys going forward, right? you got to start to, to contain him a little bit more. But don't forget about the fact that Hofstra has all, also left some free throws out there here in the second half. They had one situation where they had, uh, you know, an end one they missed. They had another situation where they had the front end of the one and one. They missed that one, so they're leaving points out there. And then they did it again. I mean, those are a lot of points you're yep. leaving out there in such a tight game between these two groups, and especially when you are not shooting the basketball well. Both teams, 29 and 33 point attempts in this contest, and Hofter just six of 29. This is one of their worst shooting days overall in terms of statistics. Yeah. But they're still in it, you know? There's still a lot of basketball to be played. Well, they've struggled on this end of the floor as we talked about. Hofstra just one of their last seven. They haven't scored in three and a half minutes, and they need a bucket here. They go to Dubar down low, backing down Butler. Kick out for Carlos, he'll drive it. Jaquan Carlos threw some contact. Now Fritz is down with it, just five on the shot clock. Hofstra has to get one up here. Thomas with three, inside looking for Fritz, and he threw it out of bounds. A couple times Hofstra has had trouble the end of that shot clock when it isn't hitting. Uh, bring us to another timeout here. 3.06 to play. We've got the finish coming up next. Got a seven point game here late at Hofstra. Charleston on top of the Pride 64 57. These two teams, top two teams in the regular season in the CAA a year ago. Charleston picked to repeat after winning the CAA tournament in the preseason. Number one team in the preseason poll, getting 10 of the 14 first place votes. Hofstra picked fourth in the preseason poll. And we talked to Colin Curtin before the game, as we always do, Dan special assistant to head coach Speedy Claxton. He told us win or lose, the season isn't over here for the Pride, but it's certainly one you'd like to get early on. Big game. And the two top teams in the conference. It's going to come down to the wire. Yeah, this conference, you know, it's loaded with talent, and that's, the I think, the thing that you also, you never want to really drop a game here or there because you never know where you'll end up falling in the seating, but UNCW yeah. is a really good team. Drexel's a really good team. Drexel's a really good team. Yeah. I mean, Delaware is always a tough out no matter when you play them. So, you know, there's a lot of tough competition, especially this year in the conference. And the Pride have Delaware here at the MAC on Saturday. So two tough games to open up conference play against two of the better teams in the conference. Key defensive possession here for the Pride. Smith left open for a three. Rain Smith makes it a 10-point lead. I do not know how you leave that guy wide open like that. He's their best three-point shooter. Dubar on the backdoor cut, lays it in. 
And the Pride are going to bring some full court pressure here. They're going to need to force some turnovers. Now down eight. That stops a 14-0 run as well. And Charleston has done it with a three-point shot. I believe it's, it's either three or four threes during that run. 11 threes now in the game for the Cougars. Fritz on the sideline went off his leg. Out of bounds. We'll stay Charleston basketball here with eight on the shot clock. At this point, if you're Hofstra, you obviously you have fouls to give. Foul situation is good on your end. You have two fouls to give here. Just two timeouts, but you need to get a stop here and then a quick bucket. Berzovic working on Fritz. Berzovic double teamed and he traveled. So that's a start for them, right? They Now you have a chance to be able to run the floor here. But with under two minutes to go, you don't have a, a ton of time to really work the shot clock. Kind of have to get this off quickly. And they're going to bring Butler all the way up actually into the front court here as they're also subbing two different players on. Burnham's going to come out for Smith and they're also going to bring you know, the little offense, Gene defense. Scott. Yeah, yeah, it's you kind of have to do here, especially when you have a bench that's so deep, but Smith also playing with four personal fouls. Under two to play. Pride trail it by eight. Fritz hands off for Thomas. Tyler Thomas on the drive down the left side, lays it in. Thomas going all the way to the rim that time, able to lay it in. Back to a two possession game. And a timeout taken by Pat Kelsey. He's got three of them left, so he'll set his offense with 1.27 on the clock. Tyler oh, Thomas. Luck here, Thomas. Tyler Thomas does not go to the basket very often. Normally, he's a guy who will end up hitting that fadeaway shot or, of course, the three, but he has been taking some good takes this season of heading to the rim. That's what you need to do. You know, sometimes you got to head to the rim, especially also with the foul situation. 19 fouls for Charleston, so next one will put Hofstra at the line for two in the double bonus. So if you're the bride here with still a minute 27 to go, I mean, that's a, a good amount of time right now, but you need to get a stop here with 22 on the shot clock. You need to get a stop here before you can start worrying about fouling and whatnot in this situation. No, one thing that jumps out here for Hofstra on the offensive end, we know they're you know the three-headed monster offensively. All three guys have played well. Thomas, Dubar, and Carlos. They've combined for 55 of Hofstra's 61 points tonight. Just six points from anybody else. Two from Bryce Washington, four from Yako Fritz. That's it. And you need some depth contributions here, especially against a team like Charleston, who's got that depth as we've talked about. Now Cougars get it in for Fulton. Guarded by Carlos. Fulton bounces inside. Has it back now here with five. Fulton, he's got to drive it, kick out. Berzovic will take the three, it's good! Ante Berzovic, another from deep. The big man stepping out and making two huge threes here down the stretch. Thomas again on the drive, the fadeaway no good. The follow from Fritz gets taken down. Tied up there with Burnham. Looks like they got the foul on Fritz, they do. And we talked about Ante Berzovic all night long, Dan. Guy who can do so much for this Charleston team. He's made two threes tonight, both of them huge ones here in the final minutes. That was such a good defensive possession by Hofstra. They did everything right. And even a contested shot straight away, yeah, you know he can shoot, right? He's not their best three-point shooter, but you know he has the ability to shoot. And Fritz still had a hand in his face, knocking that one down. That just felt like a dagger. It took a lot of life out of this building. What a huge shot. And Pride bringing the full court pressure. Again, they have one foul to give here. 
Have to foul one more time to send Charleston to the line as Butler will be fouled by Plotnikov. Or they got Fritz on it. Both players were there. So that is the sixth team foul. And now in the next one, it'll be a one and one. And Hofstra's losses this season, five of the six losses, they've been held under 70 points. And we always know Hofstra can score. That's the one yeah. big thing with them, right? The only game that they did not lose being held under 70 was actually an Iona game that they really gutted out in New Rochelle back in December. Fritz gives the foul on Berzovic, and now that'll be up to Charleston to make their free throws here to ice this one. And that was a, a gutsy, gutsy possession down the stretch. You know, they had their chances, Hofter, in this game. You know, you're not shooting the ball that well. you got to find other ways, and I think that was the big thing. You know, you saw it early in the second half. They were forcing turnovers. They were getting out. They were running. But it's a 13-0, 14-0 run, excuse me, that really just put things away here. They had too many dry spells in the offensive end in this game. Berzovic makes the front end. Well, Dan, you touched on it off the top. It is a new season, a lot of new faces, but you knew that Charleston would have this game circled on their calendar after Hofstra beat them at their place last year. And the Cougars down the stretch as Thomas misses the three. They've been the better team. Dubar will give the foul on Smith. And Charleston just kind of able to close this one out. Easiest way to put it. It's a back and forth second half. Hofstra had a 57-53 lead with seven minutes and change to play as Smith makes the free throw. They've scored just four points since then. It's so rare, too, because Hofstra's really good at closing out games. They have been all season, with really the exception of that St. Louis game. They just haven't been able to get it going tonight. Look, next time these two teams meet, they're much different teams. Obviously not hitting their stride yet, the Pride. They knew that. They want to hit it right around February. And the next time these two teams meet will be the last game of the regular season. Well, shot clock is off. Charleston will just dribble this one out. And that'll do it. The Cougars come here to Hofstra and the Pride. A loss in the CAA opener. Your final score, 73-61. For sure, a lot of positive things you can take away if you're the Pride in this game. Obviously, the, the defensive effort that you saw, especially early on in that second half, what you are able to see on the glass. But, you know, it was a tough contest for them. And to come here on the road, this is exactly what Pat Kelsey and Charleston wanted to do. Use their depth, gutsy win, come right out and start 1-0 in conference play. So for Hofstra, listen, Saturday, turn it around. You have Delaware here at home. and get back to 500 in CAA. Well, the Pride drop their CAA opener here at home. Charleston comes on the road to win it, 73-61. The final score, Pride next in action, as you said, Dan, here at home on Saturday. We'll have it for you as Hofstra will take on the Delaware Blue Hens. Well, that'll do it from here for Dan and our entire crew and Dylan as well. I'm Kevin. Thanks so much for watching. Charleston, 73, Hofstra, 61, your final. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday evening.